Good morning, everybody, and Shabbat Shalom. It is a good day. I am thankful yet again. Hashem has truly blessed us through another week, another day to come into fellowship, another day to teach his message and teach his word uh, for a people that want to know him. Uh, I'm just so thankful. Hashem has been so good to us. Uh, this day of rest that he has prescribed for us because he cares about us. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start this morning. If you would, let us stand and turn to Isaiah chapter 55. So Isaiah chapter 55, we're going to go through this. Um, we have definitely been taught this and uh, we know these scriptures, we know these verses, but what does it mean? So have we been misled? Uh, has it been misinterpreted? And even when we get into Jeremiah, which is the root of the uh, message today is in Jeremiah, but we want to give you a backstory of what this actually means and what's going on here. So Isaiah 55 and verse 1. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no silver, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without silver and without price. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread, and your labor for what does not satisfy? You labor. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come to me, here, so that your being lives. And let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy kindnesses of David. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, a nation you do not know, you shall call. And a nation who does not know you runs to you because of Hashem, your Elohim. And the set apart one of Israel, for he has adorned you. Seek Hashem while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Hashem who has compassion on him and to our El, for he pardons much. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Hashem. For as the Shamayim are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the Shemaim, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me empty, but shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I sent it. For with joy you go out and with peace you are brought in. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field clap the hands. Instead of the thorn, the cypress comes up, and instead of the nettle, the myrtle comes up, and it shall be to a shem for a name for an everlasting sign which is not cut off. So let us lift up our eyes. Shem, Adonai, Elohim, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your tenderness, your mercy, your kindness. Uh, you are truly El, and there is none beside you. Thank you for how you have revealed yourself to us, uh, that we might know who you are, the creator of the Shamayim and Aretz. Uh, no one is equal to you. May we just praise you in this day. Uh, we recognize you as our sanctifier, as it talks about in the Tanakh, or it talks about in Torah. Uh, when we preserve this day and keep this day, we work our six days. On the seventh day, we rest uh, in honor unto you and reverence unto you. Lead God and direct us. Speak for us at this time. Give us a peace of mind that we might know you, uh, but more uh, earnestly as shown that we would be able to teach your word plainly, that people would be able to understand it and also to apply it in their lives. Just give us that passion and that spirit, the ruach, uh, to just know you and to be driven to follow after you. Uh, may we mold our lives and protect our hearts uh, in accordance with your Torah. You are our El and we are your people. We pray for everyone in this congregation and all those that might not know you, who might listen to this uh, message, that they might come to know who you are. Baruch Hashem, hallelujah, amen. So, Isaiah 55, verse 1. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no silver, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without silver and without price. So, uh, we've definitely made the connection many times to the waters, and also when we get into Jeremiah, it talks about they have forsaken the rivers of living water. And what is the water? Torah. It is Torah. So that is what is refreshing. That is what is coming from down, uh, coming from on high. That is coming from Hashem. It is given to us. Uh, it is refreshing. It is Torah. It is instruction. It gives life. So when we get into Jeremiah, we'll see that more. But what is he talking about here? Oh, everyone who thirsts comes to the water and you who have no silver come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without silver and without price. Eben Ezra says, buy and eat the wisdom as the verb to eat being used in a figurative sense here, signifying to learn. 
learn, perceive, just like it talks about in Ezekiel 3.1. He says, eat this roll. Wisdom is demanded by the soul as food is demanded by the body. The thing is, we have a people today that are starving. They're starving for knowledge. They're starving. They're hungry. They're not fed. They're unsatisfied. You have people leaving Christianity. You have people leaving religion. You have people leaving uh, being messianic. People are leaving, leaving, leaving religion, leaving God in general. Why? Because they're starving. Because they're hungry. Because they're not fed. But the thing is, there's a difference there. You can leave religion, but don't stop searching. There's a difference in people that just give up to, on God altogether and the people that continue to search. So there are people that are leaving religion because they know there are lies in it and they are not being fed, they are not being nourished, but some people just give up. So my suggestion and my charge today would be don't give up. Hashem is real. <laughs> he is the L. He is the creator. He is there. He is true. He is living. So uh, if you are hungry, he said, come. You don't have to bring your money you don't have to bring your silver. Just buy and eat. What are you buying with? It is your time. It is your attention. This is what you are spending on it. You spend your time and your attention on the truth, on the Torah. So this is what you are spending. That is your money. Come buy wine and milk without silver and without price. Wine and milk help dissolve food and accelerate digestion. That's why it says wine and milk, which is different than water, okay? Okay. Uh, it's different than water. So he says, come by wine and milk to help you digest what is happening here. Why do you weigh out silver? Verse two, for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? You are left empty is what he is saying. The people are hungry and they are starving. They are going to services being fed with a simplified, glorified prosperity doctrine and they are left hungry. Why do you continue to put your time and attention into that is what he is saying. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me here so that your being lives. So he is talking about learning, perceiving understanding Torah, applying Torah in your life, getting the instructions of the Father. Let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthiness, the kindnesses of David. So what are the mercies of David? So he's saying, let me make this covenant with you like the mercies of David that I made with him, like the covenant I made with David and the kindness which I showed to him, promising, promising him my mercy will I keep with him forever. That's the promise. Let me make a covenant with you like the mercies of David that I made with him. An everlasting covenant that I will be your El and you will be my people and I have made a promise to you. Incline your ear. Verse four, see I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. This is also a messianic reference to the everlasting covenant, okay? Messiah will testify that there is no other El but Hashem, Ebenezer. So that is what Mashiach is going to do. He's going to testify of yod heh vav -Heh. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, verse 4, a leader and a commander for the people. Verse 5, see a nation you do not know, you shall call, and a nation who does not know you runs to you. That's Isaiah 2. That is everyone shall know, Jeremiah 31. Uh, that is all nations shall want to know Torah. They are going to want to know who God is. If you look at the minor prophets, uh, they are going to hang on to the Jews and say that surely God is with you. That's what it's talking about here. All the nations are going to flow and want to know who Hashem is. So they will be one nation. A nation you do not know, you shall call, and a nation who does not know you runs to you because of Hashem, your Elohim, and the set-apart one of Israel, for he has adorned you. Seek Hashem while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Wicked. That word is rasha. Let the wicked forsake his way. That is wicked, criminal, the guilty one, the bad person, the ungodly, the one that did wrong. Let him forsake his way. 
and the unrighteous man his thoughts. The unrighteous is Avon. It is unrighteous, trouble, the sorrowed one, the one to pant. And I really like this definition. It means to exert oneself. What is he talking about in the beginning? Why are you putting your time and attention? Why are you laboring for things that do not satisfy? You're still hungry after that. You think about it, uh, MSG. Um, the things that have MSG in them, you fill up quick, but what happens? Later on, you're hungry because it does not satisfy. You have to have a balanced meal in order to be satisfied with all of your macros, your fats, your carbs, and your proteins. So you gotta have all that in there in order to be satisfied, and that's all here, <laughs> okay? So he's saying, why do you continue to labor for what does not satisfy? Come to me, seek Hashem while he is to be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Hashem who has compassion on him and to our Elohim for he pardons much. So the roots of what's going on here in Isaiah 55, let the wicked forsake his way and let the unrighteous forsake his thoughts. Okay, Azab, that means to leave, leave it, forsake it, let it loose, set it free, relinquish. Um, I love it. Let it go. Let the wicked forsake. Let it go. Loose. Set free your way. <laughs> Let the wicked, the ungodly, the guilty one turn. Let the unrighteous, that is the one who is panting, exerting himself for something that is nothing. He continues to work and labor and it does not satisfy. It does not profit. It's vanity. Let him forsake, relinquish his thoughts. Turn. Let him return to Hashem who has compassion on him and to our Elohim for he pardons much. Notice if you look in verse seven, it doesn't say, and you shall give a sacrifice and offering. And you shall offer a bullock unto me and you shall offer a ram or I will send someone to take your place. What does it say? And the BBE, it says he is full of forgiveness. <laughs> Uh, if you look at the very last portion of it, it says he pardons much. The BBE says there is full forgiveness when you turn. The Geneva says very ready to forgive. So let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous forsake his thoughts. Return to Hashem. He is very ready to forgive. I see abundantly pardoned. That means completely. Just return to him. Change what you're doing. That word return is shub. It means to turn back, go back, retreat, convert, retire. Stop doing what you're doing and turn back to Hashem. But I love that very last part. He pardons much when you return. So if you have done much evil, what does he do? He pardons much evil. <laughs> when you return to him and you forsake your ways, and you forsake your thoughts. Now, verse eight, this is the one that's usually blown out of proportion, but if we keep it in context here, we can understand it better. Verse eight, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares Hashem. My thoughts, that is mak hashaba. It is my thought, my device, my plan, my purpose is not your purpose. My invention is not your invention. My intentions, my plot, my advice is not yours. The way, Derek, it is manner. My habits are not your habits. My course of life is not your course of life. My customs and my moral character is not like yours. Now, we have been taught some ethereal uh, doctrine on what this is saying. We can't know him. We can't walk his path because his ways are not like our ways. Who is he talking to here? The wicked man. Wicked man, your ways are not like my ways. Right, unrighteous man, your thoughts are not like my thoughts. So there's a very particular subject here. Who he is talking to? The evil man. We get excited and we dry up. Okay. <laughs> so who? Who is he talking to here? My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Oh, wicked and unrighteous man. So what does he tell him? Return and I will abundantly pardon. 
For as the Shemaim are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For the rain shall come down, and the snow from the Shemaim, and do not return there, <clears throat> but water the earth. Talking about Torah, talking about the instruction, talking about stop spending your time and effort on things that are useless, things that do not satisfy. Return to me. Leave that. Forsake it. Return to me. I will abundantly pardon. You don't have to have an intermediary. I am here. Return to me. Get a personal connection with me. For as the rain comes down and the snow from the Shemaim and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so is my word. What's the word? Return. <clears throat> the word is return and I will abundantly pardon. The word that goes forth from my mouth, it does not return to me empty, but it shall do what I please and shall certainly accomplish what I send it for. So all those who want to come in, come in, return, forsake your ways, forsake your thoughts. Your devices, your plans, your purpose, forsake them. Your habits, wicked man, your course of life, your moral character, what you think to be morality, forsake it. Return to me and trust in me. Four, verse 12, with joy you go out and with peace you are brought in. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing before you and all the trees uh, of the field clap the hands. Verse 13, instead of the thorn, the cypress comes up. Instead of the metal, the myrtle comes up. And it shall be to Hashem for a name and an everlasting sign which is not cut off. So the wicked prosper. We can see that in Psalms. The wicked prosper. Um, they go on their way and we think, well, oh my goodness, when will judgment come? If you see that in Ecclesiastes, it says, because judgment is not executed speedily, uh, the hearts of men are sought continually to do evil. So um, there is a day. There will be a time when the thorn is taken out. Instead of the thorn, the cypress comes up. What he is saying is the unrighteous will be taken out and the righteous will be set up. Just as I have promised to pluck up and pull down, I'm going to set you up and establish you. And it will be an everlasting name. In the end, everybody's gonna see his work. He's going to restore Israel and everybody's gonna know who God is because it's the God of Israel. There will be no more questions. Everyone's gonna know. So this is an awesome thought here. He said, my word's going to come to you and it will prosper when you return to me and forsake your way and you forsake your thoughts. Refuse your wrong habits and vain plans and return to me who? O unrighteous and wicked man. So who's he talking to? Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. O wicked man, return. So this is possible. You can obey the word. Jeremiah 17. It is possible. Uh, we did, we've been doing reels on Instagram. And one of the most discouraging things about any new goal that you set or any new thing that you're going to try is you have to do it one step at a time. <laughs> That's what the discouraging thing is. Because we want to be at our goal yesterday. I wanted it to be done yesterday. But uh, let, just take me, for example. I have been going to the gym six plus years. You've just got to be consistent. You've got to be determined. You've got to have it in you. And I believe everybody gets to a point when they're sick and they're tired. And I don't want to live this way anymore. And I don't want to be this way anymore. And I don't want to have these thoughts. And you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you just turn. You're just turning. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So you got to take your life. Just as David says, I lift up my being unto you. You take your life in your hands and you present it to Hashem. Take care of yourself. Jeremiah 17 and verse one. The sin of Yehuda is written with a pen of iron engraved with the point of a diamond on the tablets of the heart and on the horns of their altars. So Rashi says the pen of iron is a representation of deeply engraved and cannot be erased. It is deeply engraved. The sin of, Je uh, the sin of Judah, the sin of Yehuda 
is written with a pen of iron. It is deeply engraved with, it, with a point of the diamond on the tablet of the heart and on the horns of their altars. Uh, the engraved also is a reference to as one who plows deeply. It's that deep. They are so ingrained in it. Continuing on. While their children remember their altars and their asherim, by the spreading trees and on the high hills, my mountain in the field, I give as plunder your wealth, all your treasures, your high places of sin throughout all your borders. And you, even of yourself, shall let go of your inheritance, which I gave you. And you shall make, uh, and I shall make you serve your enemies in a land that you have not known, for you have kindled a fire in my displeasure, which burns forever. So you have Israel, who was scattered whenever uh, the Assyrians came in, the Assyrian captivity. And now you have Jeremiah's time whenever uh, you have the Babylonian captivity. So I'm going to take you out of this land and take you captive by Nebuchadnezzar. So, verse 5, thus said Hashem, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart turns away from him. So if you know anything about uh, Jewish doctrine, they, they say men have two souls. You have a desiring soul uh, that says, I want to suffice this body and the needs for this body, but you also have a spiritual soul or, or a soul that is from Hashem. So you are battling constantly between these two. And that's what it's talking about here in Jeremiah. He's saying, cursed is the man who trusts in himself, but blessed is the man who trusts in Hashem. So you have a constant battle. I think we did uh, the message one time, two hearts. You have two hearts, a heart that wants to have and fulfill the desires of yourself and this body, but you also have a heart that looks for something that is higher, something that is greater than, than who you are. So people have a desire to look for God. It is given within us. People have a desire to worship. Some people worship themselves. Some people are misled in their worship, but there is something within you that says there is something that is greater than you. So... What does he say? Curse is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart turns away from Hashem. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and not see when good comes and shall inhabit uh, the parched places in the wilderness and salt that is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in Hashem and whose trust is Hashem. It is hard, and we've said that before, if not impossible, to build a relationship with someone you do not trust. Okay, so the roots of your emunah, your faith, the roots of that are built on trust. And that is why how many times did he say, I am the God of Israel. I am the one who has delivered you. This is what I have done for you. I have fed you with manna through the wilderness and your uh, shoes did not wear out on your feet. Why is he saying those things? Why is he telling us that? So we trust him. I brought you this far. I have done these things for you. It is me. You will see. It is no other L. I have showed you this to declare to you that you will know that I am L and there is no one beside me. Deuteronomy 4. Why does he do that? I prove to you who I am. Trust me. Trust me is what he is saying. I've brought you this far. I'm going to continue to bring you out. Okay. So trust me. Blessed is the man. You got to trust somebody with what? Your heart. Your heart. He's saying build a relationship. Baruch is the man who trusts in Hashem and whose trust is Hashem. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. What is the water? You are trusting in Hashem. You are trusting in his instruction. That is Torah. He is the fountain of living water. He springs you up to life. I was going to do another reel. <laughs> Tired of being dead. Just dead, miserable, sad. Um, talk about self-loathing, loathing over yourself. Oh, pity me, pity my life. Think about Ezekiel. I want to be the person that encourages the people that it's time to come out of the graves. It's time to live your life. What is it? What is the life that's brought into them? What, is, what does Hashem tell Ezekiel? Speak my word. Speak my word, teach them my word, and the breath will come in them, and they will come alive, and we are walking around like zombies, dead people, dead people. I want to live. I want to live. I've heard the um, I've heard the quote before. I'm tired of just existing, just existing. I want to live. 
I want to be alive. I want to feel alive. I want that breath of life within me. I want to have vigor with my life. We walk around with our head down, and that's the type of life that we live. We walk around like dead people. We have no life in us. It's just mundane. I can't stand this. I can't take it anymore. And that's how we are. I want to be the person that encourages you. I want to be the person that sends the word and puts the life back in you that Israel will become yet again another army, a mighty army. It brings life. The water brings life. Nothing lives without water. We did that message too. So the tree is the person. The water is Torah. You are trusting in his instruction. So it spreads. You will grow in Torah. It spreads out its roots by the river and does not see when he comes. So when it's time for everything else to be dried up, you're satisfied. You're taken care of. You, are, you have a continual supply from the Torah. But what do you have to do? What did he say? Come by and eat. So what do you have to do? You have to put time and attention into it. You have to put effort into it. You got to put some type of work and labor into it in order to receive the benefits of it. A tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and does not see when he comes and his leaf shall, not, uh, shall be green and in the year of drought he is not anxious does, nor does he cease to yield fruit. So there's always action. There's always life. Why? Because he's drawing from the Torah. He's drawing from that instruction. I said, I'm tired of not living. I'm going to live. So verse nine, the heart is crooked above all and desperately sick. Who shall know it? So this is the verse that we wanted to get into. This is the root of our uh, message today. This is the verse that we wanted to get into. I believe that this verse has been completely thrown out of context. So who is he talking about here? Judah? What's, what's Judah? What are they going through right now? Your sin is engraved on your heart with a pin of diamond. Okay. It's very deep. So what are you doing? You are continuing to trust in yourself. You are continuing to do whatever you want to do, okay? So what is this verse talking about? Because I believe that has been misinterpreted. Many people use this verse to say, don't follow your heart. If we had a title for this message, the title of the message is follow your heart, okay? Because if your heart is righteous, are you gonna tell that person not to follow their heart? If that person has a desire to do what Hashem has called them to do and trust in Hashem and has a great relationship with Hashem, are you not going to follow your heart? Okay. Are you not going to do what your heart tells you to do? So what is this verse talking about? This is not about don't follow your heart. Because if you also look, we'll get into Ecclesiastes. There is a portion in Ecclesiastes where it says, follow your heart. But realize, O oh youth, Hashem's going to ask you why. Why did you do that? And we'll get into that too. So <laughs> pending. Okay. So uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse nine, the heart is crooked above all and desperately sick. Who shall know it? So uh, if you look, uh, if the word for crooked is a cob. It is deceitful, slippery, crooked, polluted. But if you look at Malbim and what he says, he says he interprets a call as ambush. Okay? The heart is bombarded with harmful temptations and evil influence all the time. That's the thing. It interprets it as ambush. The heart is bombarded with harmful temptations and evil influence. So what is this really talking about? Guard yourself. Guard yourself. Uh, I meant to get into, I think I did, Proverbs. Uh, what does it say? Out of the heart is the issues of life, so therefore guard your heart. Inspect your heart. Watch over your heart. So if you look at uh, the weak, it's desperately sick. Uh, I love the way that they, uh, I love the way they translate these <laughs> because it just seems so hopeless. But that is not the way that it's taught in Hebrew. Above all and desperately sick, that is weak. It is frail. It is anosh. It is sick, it is woeful. Radox says fragile. The heart is fragile. It's complex. It's pained. Man's heart suffers 
from aches and ailments such as sorry, worry, worry, and malice. Malbim again says he renders Akobe as human. The heart is human. Man is ambushed with evil thoughts and his human frailty allows him to abandon his desire to do good and submit to the temptations of the heart and thoughts. So what is this actually about? We are under attack by outside influences. Have confidence and trust in Hashem and grow, be nourished by his Torah. That's what this is about. It's not it's a hopeless thing. He's saying your heart is going to be attacked. Your heart is bombarded. You are human. We are so hard on ourselves. So hard on ourselves. I'm hard on myself. Like I said, I like to say it a little bit more scientifically that I overanalyze. I don't overthink. <laughs> I overanalyze everything. I'm an overanalyzer. I look at everything and I just over and over and over. Did I say that? How, did, how could I have done it better? I do that. I'm an overanalyzer, not an overthinker. So um, that's who I am. But I'm so hard on myself. So hard on myself. Sometimes you just got to learn and let go and just grow. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't treat yourself so ill. If anybody needs to love you, it's yourself. You need to take care of yourself. You need to treat yourself well, especially when it comes to mental health. It's not like you never fail. And that's what I love about Torah. And that's what I love about Tanakh. Hashem gets that. I don't see anywhere where there is an instruction that you have to live a completely perfect life. If you read, and when he talks about to Abraham, he says, walk before me and be perfect. What does that mean? What does that mean? Be mature. Be mature about what you do. Learn how to balance out your life. Weigh it in the scale. And that's what we'll talk about when we get into it later. You have options. Weigh out your options. What are you going to do? That's what this is about. Trust in Hashem. When you trust in Hashem, follow your heart. Do what he requests you to do. Be strengthened in him. You have confidence. Build that relationship. Because notice, if you read verse 9 and then you jump into 10, I, Hashem, search the heart. I'm trying you. I'm testing you. I want to see what's in your heart. I want to see if you're following me or you're following your own desires. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes the strength his arm. Uh, but blessed is the man who trusts in Hashem. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. So what is he saying? Where's your heart at? It's not about don't follow your heart. It's about where is it? What are your intentions? Why do you do the things that you do? So what is he telling us? Examine yourself. Guard your heart. I, Hashem, search the heart. I try the kidneys and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It leaves him in the midst of his days and at its end he is a fool. So we've talked about this before and every time since you haven't, if you haven't seen the other messages that we've done, the partridge sits on eggs that are not theirs, Okay. Uh, so they will uh, mother or rather uh, incubate the eggs of another bird. And then what happens when the bird hatches? Hey, you're not my mom. Like that Dr. Seuss book. Where's my mom? Okay, so, <laughs> uh, but you're not my mom. And then goes to its flock. And then what happens to the partridge? It's left with nothing. All the labor that it has done, just like we were talking about in Isaiah 55, all the labor, all the effort, all the time, all the attention that that partridge had put into getting those wealth, that getting that wealth or getting those eggs to hatch, is vanity. It's done. It's gone. So, such as one, uh, it leaves him in the midst of his days, and at the end, he is a fool. So, do right, do justice, get honest gain is what he is saying. Verse 12, an esteemed throne exalted from the beginning is the place of our Mikdash. O Hashem, the expectation of Israel, all who forsake you are put to shame. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Hashem, the fountain of living water. That is Hashem, that is his Torah, that is his instruction. They have forsaken it and they shall be written in the dust. They will not live. Heal me, O Hashem, so that I am healed. Save me so that I am saved for you are my praise. See, they say to me, where is the word of Hashem? Let it come now. And I have not run away from being a shepherd who follows you, nor have I longed for the woeful day you yourself have known. 
that which came out of my lips was before you. Do not be a ruin to me. You are my shelter in the day of evil. Let these who persecute me be put to shame, but let, do not let me be put to shame. Let them be broken and do not let me be broken. Bring on them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Thus Hashem said to me, go and stand in the gate of the children of the people by which the sovereigns of Yehuda come in and out, by which they go out, and come in and by which they go out, and in all the gates of Yerushalayim. And you shall say to them, hear the word of Hashem, you sovereigns of Yehuda, and all of Yehuda, and all the inhabitants of Yerushalayim who enter by these gates. Thus said Hashem, guard yourselves. <coughs> Guard yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, nor take a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, nor do any work. And you shall set apart the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers, but they did not obey, nor incline their ear, and they made their neck stiff, not to hear and not to receive instruction. And it shall be if you diligent, ah, diligently, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get a drink. <clears throat> It shall be, if you diligently obey me, declares Hashem to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day and set apart the Sabbath day to do no work in it. So you shall be lifted up. Men sovereigns and heads sitting on the throne of David shall enter in through the gates of the city, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their heads, the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall be inhabited forever. Return. You've got to turn. You've got to trust in Hashem. You completely devote yourself to Him and you follow what He is. If you have a desire to follow His Torah, follow your heart. So, uh, we are under attack by outside influences. Have confidence. Trust in Hashem and grow. Be nourished by His Torah, the water. This is not a passage explaining don't follow your heart, but rather a passage charging us to guard it. Scrutinize it. Examine your attentions, intentions, and desires. Are they yours? Or is it a desire of Hashem? You trust in Him. Ecclesiastes 11. Last two verses, Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 9. So rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart gladden you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart. That's follow your heart. <laughs> follow your heart, O young man. Uh, keep on going. So the, um, if you look at the net version, it says, follow the impulses of your heart. <laughs> the BBE says, go in the ways of your heart. And then the easy English says, do the things that you want to. So, there's a catch. There's a catch, though. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart gladden you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these, Elohim brings you into right ruin. So I am, I'm thankful that, it's going to sound weird, but that I've failed in my life. I'm thankful that I've fallen in my life. Uh, there's another quote that we did this week, that failure is on the path to success, but giving up is not an option. You're going to fail. The thing that happens when we set these new goals is that we are not consistent. We're not consistent. Once we fall off, we continue to fall off. We stay off the wagon. We don't jump back on. When we fail, we just think, and I've, I've talked to somebody recently who said that, well, I messed up today, I might as well continue to mess up today, and I'll just try again tomorrow. But then that one more time that they mess up that next day, what do they do? They fall off, and it's just a vicious cycle. You've got to be consistent. You've got to be determined. Failure is going to happen. Failure is on the road to success, but giving up is not the option. You don't give up, you hop back on. So you have to be determined. You have to be determined to reach that goal. Now, he says, follow your heart in your youth. Do, do whatever you wanna do, but just realize, and I really like one of these versions, it says uh, that Hashem is going to ask you, why did you do that? So follow your heart, but he's gonna ask you, why did you do that? So the whole purpose of this is 
Guard your way. Check what you're doing. Make sure that it's established in Hashem. Now, I'm a very professional person. <laughs> Some people, when they see me at work, they're like, well, they sometimes feel like they can't approach me. <laughs> but they don't know me. They don't know who I am. So, but anyway, I'm a very professional person. But I know how to let loose. I know how to get, have a good time. I go hang out with my friends. Go hang out with your friends. Uh, what does it say in Ecclesiastes? Drink, eat, be merry. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. I believe in that. I believe you can do that. But you cannot party yourself silly. You have to know when to balance out your life. You cannot do that. So, um, continuing on, the catch is we will all be judged. Everything that you do will be judged. So what is the answer, Hashem? It's discretion. Be disciplined. You can have a good time. Let loose. There's a time to let loose, but there's a time to tighten up. There's a time to be serious, and there's a time to be silly. Okay? So, uh, he will ask you, why did you do that? <laughs> Continuing on, I'm going to read that verse again, then we'll get into verse 10. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart gladden you in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of your heart. There is follow your heart to a T in Ecclesiastes. But he says, walk in the side of your mind or in the side of your eyes, but know that for all these Elohim brings you into right ruling. He's gonna ask you, why did you do that? Therefore, remove wrath from your heart. So don't be excessively angry. And also that's something that um, I was thinking about last night. Have emotion, okay? I am not the person that tells you don't be angry, okay? This is wrath. Uh, that's excessively angry. That is, I want to hurt you. That's what wrath is. I'm, I'm going to hurt you. But anger is an emotion. Why do we feel angry? Where does anger come from? What's the, the signal? I've been done wrong. Somebody did me wrong. You're not listening to me. You're not doing what I'm asking you to do. So what's happening? I'm angry now. I'm mad. But you know what? Emotions make us who we are. That's why I believe whenever you look back in Genesis and he said he made him a living being, we're emotional creatures. We're very emotional, okay? Not everybody has a very pure emotion. And what I mean by that is um, it is emotion that you cling to. It is your uh, default emotion. Some people are defaulted to be angry. Some people are defaulted to be sad. Some people are defaulted to be depressed or there is a default uh, emotion that you have. So we all have different emotions, but we share that we are emotional creatures. I'm not gonna tell you that you don't have emotions or don't have emotions or don't feel the way that you feel, that's where you suppress emotions and that's where it gets bad. You never tell somebody you're overreacting or you never tell somebody that um, that doesn't matter or you push off their emotions. Why? Because what happens? You repress them. You push them down. What do you do? Especially, uh, this is what I've been thinking about. Women, you can prove me if I'm wrong. Prove me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but when it comes to women and men, we're different, okay? And I've said this many times. Men are very logical creatures. Why? Because when women have a problem, what do we do? Let's fix it, okay? That's logical. That's the logical side. And two halves make one whole. That's why I said, leave your mother, cling to your wife. But anyway, women are emotional creatures, okay? So they don't really want an answer to what you're telling them. What do they want? They just want you to know how they feel. So instead of saying, let's fix that and try to bring reason to it, identify the emotion. I know you're angry. I know you're sad. I can feel your emotion, okay? Women don't want answers. They don't want your answers. They don't want you to resolve their problems. They just want you to know how they feel. So identify the emotion. Is that correct? <laughs> Is that right? Okay, so I got some head nods. <laughs> But men want to be reasonable creatures. We just want to fix it. But that's why the two halves become a whole because you become one flesh. You become one whole person. Men can learn about their emotions and express themselves. Let's talk about our emotions uh, whenever they are with their partner. Women can learn to be more reasonable and try to navigate through life if they would listen to their husbands. So, anywho. <laughs> Back to Ecclesiastes. So therefore, remove wrath from your heart. That's an emotion. Uh, you can be angry, but don't be 
be excessively angry. Uh, there's no reason to act upon your anger. Put away evil, that's the trouble, from your flesh for youth and the dawn of life are futility. So it's emptiness, it's vain. There's no purpose. What does that mean? The youth lack discipline and understanding. That's why I said before that I have failed in my life and I'm thankful that I have failed in my life and I'm thankful to, for the mercy and the tenderness of Hashem because through those failures and those ignorant times that I've followed every desire that I wanted to, he taught me something. He taught me something that I needed to know and I'm thankful for his mercy and I'm thankful for his tenderness because he understands as it talks about in Psalms, our frame, we're but dust. He gets it. What did it say in Jeremiah 17? The heart is human. Human. Don't be so hard on yourself. So I'm thankful for those. Now, does that mean go out and do whatever you want to do? Does that mean so you can learn your hard lesson? No. No. If you know better, scrutinize what you're doing. So flip the page. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 10. What do I balance it all out with? Okay. Okay. Now, y'all can probably relate to this, and I'm, I'm very, uh, very accustomed to what I'm about to tell you, and it's very funny. When you're having a good day, okay, <laughs> when you're having a great day, you say the stupidest stuff. <laughs> you're like, oh, it's just so, I shouldn't have said that. You just feel so loose and free and happy, and then you just say something so ignorant, okay? That's me. I do that. I feel so good, and then just something flies off my tongue, and it's like, you, that was dumb. So, um, you have to be able to balance it out. You can feel good. You can embrace the good, but know when to refrain yourself. The youth is vanity. What does that mean? That when you are young, it is vain because you lack discipline and understanding. There's no purpose. There's no direction. You even look at kids whenever they're going into college. I don't know what I want to do, and they switch their majors five times. Okay, so when you are young, there's no direction. There's no youth. Why? Because it's all vanity. It's empty. You're just living. You're trying to learn. You're new. And we've talked about that before. When you have your kids, have some mercy on them. Have some compassion on them. When they ask questions, why? They're new. <laughs> They're learning. They are depending on you to direct them. They are depending on you to guide them in their lives. So have some mercy. Why? Because they're children. They're brand new. They want to know. Okay? Do you think Hashem does the same thing to us? He knows all things. Okay? What about when you ask? What does he do? He has mercy. He knows that you are young. So Ecclesiastes 10. This is what I balance it out with. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse one, dead, fly, <laughs> dead flies, Woo. okay, this is what you balance it out with, okay, just remember this. Dead flies make the perfumer's ointment stink, ferment. A little folly outweighs wisdom, esteem. So a dead fly can ruin a good thing. A little foolishness outweighs wisdom and honor. That's what Rashi says. So one foolish act, that goes back to what I was talking about. When you're having a good day, you just say one thing silly. It throws you off, okay? One foolish act can destroy a good reputation. That's what that good name is. It's a good reputation. So one foolish act can destroy a good reputation. Building a good reputation takes a lifetime, but it can be destroyed in one moment of foolishness. So it's hard to rebuild too. You do one silly thing and they look at you like you're crazy. So people remember the one bad thing you did over the 1,000 good things you did and they'll hold it over your head. That's why this is very important, okay? If you go to somebody and you ask them to forgive you, forgive yourself, okay? If they have said yes or they have said no or whatever they say, you tried, you attempted, okay? So don't be that overanalyzer. Don't be that overthinker. You did your part. Go in, ask them to forgive you. If you are holding on to that, I've done that recently. If you are holding on to something and say, wow, I really did you wrong. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I've been meditating on it. I said some bad things to you and I didn't treat you well. I'm really sorry for that. If they forgive you, great. If they don't, forgive yourself. Let it go. You tried. Don't keep overanalyzing it. Don't keep overthinking it. 
And if you let that go, it'll give you, uh, it'll give you the strength to take one step forward. So, people remember the one bad thing you did over the 1,000 good things. Um, that's what it's talking about here. A good name. A little folly outweighs wisdom and esteem. Proverbs 16, 11. Proverbs 16, 11, a right scale and balance are of Hashem. All the weights in the bag are his work. So uh, the right or just is mishpat. It is justice, judgment, having good judgment, the act of deciding a case. It is the process, procedure. It is a decision, a decision, the deciding scale, the act of deciding and the balances are of Hashem. All the weights of the bag are his work. Always, what does this mean? Weigh out your options. Always weigh out your options. Like we said before, I believe in being professional, but I also believe in having a good time. Do not let a reckless and carefree life tip the scale, is what that means. Don't let a reckless and carefree life tip the scale. Know how to balance it out. There is a time for everything. So know when the proper time to let loose and know when the proper time to tighten up. Like I said, I wanna be alive. I want to be alive. I want to be a living being, uh, a nefesh, a soul. I want to be that person. I'm tired of walking around dead and just uh, without vigor. Proverbs 28 and five, you have to know how to weigh out your options. Proverbs 28, five. Evil men do not understand right ruling, but those who seek Hashem understand all. They have good judgment. That is the justice. That is the just. That is the mishpat. That is the act of deciding. Should I or should I not? Should I do this? Should I not do this? It is a process. It is a procedure. It is good judgment. It is decision making. So have good judgment. You cannot party your life away. And then you have uh, Proverbs 28 and 5, evil men do not understand right ruling. That is judgment. But those who seek uh, Hashem understand all. That is benay. It is understand. They discern. They consider all things. They are weighing out their options. They consider. They know. They observe. They instruct. They teach. They have intelligence. They regard. They think. They deal wisely. So those who fear Hashem act accordingly. They act wisely. Life is a balance. Weigh out your options. Examine your intentions and guard your heart. Scrutinize it. Follow your heart, O oh youth, but keep in mind Hashem will ask you, why did you do that? So Jeremiah 17, what's it about? Your life is open. Your heart is open to the elements. There is all kinds of things that are going to try to distract you, deceive you, lead you off, okay? But it says trust in Hashem. Don't trust in your arm. Build that relationship with him and then act accordingly. Follow your heart, O oh young man, O oh youth, but realize everything you do will be brought into judgment. Hashem is awesome. Everybody have a blessed day. Shabbat Shalom.